breaking right now, Chopper 11, over a partial house collapse in North Franklin Township. This happened on Park Avenue around 10.30 this morning. Our WJPA partners are reporting there was a gas leak, but the gas company shut it off. No one was hurt. We have calls out to the police and fire departments to find out more. And more breaking news, the Allegheny County Health Department just released its coronavirus report. And there are 25 new cases in the county. That brings the number of confirmed cases to 290. 38 people have been or are still in the hospital. And the virus seems to be hitting 25 to 49-year-olds in Allegheny County the hardest with 128 cases or 44%. We expect the latest numbers for the rest of the state to be released during this newscast. And the city of Pittsburgh has announced more social distancing restrictions. It is now closing basketball courts and overlooks because they're getting overcrowded. The city says for the most part, people have been following rules to stay at least six feet apart. But they saw a lot of people on Mount Washington overlooks over the weekend. Pittsburgh's Catholic Diocese is locking all of their churches and canceling all funerals, baptisms, and weddings until further notice. It comes after one priest tested positive for COVID-19 and two other priests started showing mild symptoms. Also, Catholics should prepare to celebrate Holy Week online. The Diocese of Pittsburgh will live stream mass and services starting with Palm Sunday. Right now in our WPXI News app, we put a schedule together for more information. Three giant eagle workers have tested positive for the virus, impacting five stores. They work at stores in New Kensington, North Huntington, McCandless Wexford, and Altoona, as well as a get-go in Ohio. One of the employees works at a couple of those stores, and that's why there are four stores listed there here in Pennsylvania. Giant Eagle says all of these locations have been sanitized and are open. The White House extended social distancing for the whole month of April as a way to help fight the spread of the coronavirus. Our Jacqueline Fell has more on why the change was made. Top U.S. health officials say they convinced President Trump Americans needed to social distance for several more weeks. On a phone call with Fox News this morning, the president said Americans have to do their part to help hold down the number of deaths from this outbreak. After sobering, scientific models show deaths ranging upwards of 200,000. Worst case scenario, of course. The president said the guidelines had to be extended. He also acknowledged areas in New York, Michigan, and Louisiana will see the number of cases and deaths spike in the coming weeks. He now says the country won't move into recovery mode until likely June. The president also mentioned additional resources to those on the front lines, including ventilators and additional medical equipment. He also says a rapid results coronavirus test could be made available to the public as early as this week. I'm Jacqueline Fell reporting for our Washington News Bureau. A five-minute coronavirus test could be coming to urgent care urgent care clinics next week. Experts say this could be a game-changing test. The new testing kit was approved by the FDA on Friday. It was created by Abbott Labs in Illinois. It's about the size of a toaster. It can detect negative results in 13 minutes, positive results in less than five. Abbott Labs will now ramp up manufacturing and deliver 50,000 tests to medical providers every day. Over the weekend, we told you about an outbreak at a nursing home in Beaver County. And with that in mind, the state secretary of health reminded families to keep an eye on the most vulnerable. So it's very important to stay in touch. And I know personally how challenging it is not to visit your loved one. But we must make sure that they are protected and that they stay safe. And more now at that outbreak, on that outbreak at Brighton Rehab in Beaver County. 19 residents tested positive for COVID-19. Two residents at St. Barnabas Nursing Home in Richland have also tested positive, as have two at Kane Community Living Center in Glen Hazel. Loyal Hannah Care Center in Latrobe has at least one case. Also, a facility in Morgantown, West Virginia has 21 patients and eight staff members who all tested positive. A lot of people have questions about unemployment benefits. The coronavirus has moved government officials to reconsider who is eligible. Typically, you'd have to wait one week to file for unemployment, but State Representative Ryan Warner tells us eligible residents can apply immediately. Also, independent contractors and self-employed residents will be eligible for unemployment. The state is working on an application form right now. No date for that rollout has been set yet. Last week, we told you Pennsylvania has the highest amount of unemployment claims in the entire country right now. 
The CDC has put a new travel advisory in place for New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. The tri-state area is considered the epicenter of the coronavirus outbreak in the U.S. As the death toll rises, hard-hit New York City is scrambling to create more hospital beds, building a mobile hospital in Central Park. Samaritan's Purse, in partnership with the Mount Sinai Health System, started setting up the tents yesterday. Each tent has 68 beds, and the field hospital is set to open on Tuesday. Spanish police are using a water cannon truck to disinfect the streets in Madrid. The truck is normally used to break up violent protests, but it's been modified to spray disinfectant. Spain is entering its third week under near total lockdown. The government approved a strengthening of measures to curb the spread of the coronavirus. The death toll rose by 838 cases overnight to more than 6,500. In Italy, police deployed an eye in the sky over the weekend to monitor people not respecting lockdown measures to contain the outbreak. The death toll in Italy barreled past 10,000 on Saturday. The Italian government has hiked fines for people who defy the lockdown order. Anyone caught leaving their home without good reason will now face fines of up to $3,000, an increase from the previous amount of $230. While many daycares are closed because of the governor's shutdown order, some did get waivers. Channel 11's Mike Holden shows us the challenges they're facing keeping kids and workers safe. Initially, child care workers said there was some confusion about how to handle the coronavirus pandemic. But now, it's about taking care of the essential employees' children and trying to figure out what they're going to do during this time of uncertainty. Empty rooms, empty seats. This is the new norm at Solid Foundations Academy in Wexford. The daycare facility was granted a state waiver and considered an essential business after declaring they would stay open to only care for essential employees' children. On a normal day, they would be flooded with roughly 75 kids. Today, with the ongoing pandemic, there are only five children in the building. These are kids of the frontline employees. A lot of the parents have been laid off and are staying at home with their children. With numbers dropping, and Beth Rupert not charging parents who can't send their kids. She herself is wondering what will happen next, but she says she doesn't have any regrets. Their parents are working on the front lines, and the one mom is actually trying to develop the vaccine to fight the COVID. So if they're not here, she can't be at work. And coming up on Channel 11 News at 5, we're talking with officials from the Pennsylvania Child Care Association, their advice to business owners, and efforts on keeping things afloat. It's all starting at 5. Reporting in Wexford, Mike Holden, Channel 11 News. Updates on the coronavirus seem like they come in by the minute. There's so much to keep up on. We've set up a special section on the coronavirus on our WPXI News app. New video shows a big tree that fell onto the Exxon gas station on McKnight Road. The gas pumps are closed. The convenience store there is still open. It appears it happened over the weekend during that round of severe weather. Good afternoon, I'm meteorologist Danielle Dozier. Taking a look at our visible satellite, we have those thick clouds that are moving across the area. There are some breaks in the clouds. We're seeing that well down to the south here, where you're not seeing any white on the latest frame. But overall, it will be a fairly cloudy day for us. You can see on our storm tracker Doppler 11 radar, we've been tracking a few light sprinkles or light showers well up to the north across northern PA, and we'll be left with the clouds and a slight chance for an isolated shower through the day today. Winds are still breezy. Breezy. They're right around 25. The gusts in Greensburg, 24 Beaver, 32 in Washington. We will have occasional gusts to 30 miles per hour this afternoon. Nowhere near as windy as the 50 mile per hour gusts we had over the weekend. 51 is the high today. We've already reached really the ultimate high temperature, which was early this morning. So this afternoon we'll be hovering near 50, and then those winds will be coming in from the west northwest. We do have a cooler day in store on Tuesday before a rebound in the temperatures. I'll show you that coming up. In a few minutes. Flames took over a home in Lawrenceville this morning. Channel 11's Liz Kilmer spoke with a neighbor who says her dog gave her the heads up something was wrong. Firefighters were called to busy Penn Avenue this morning for reports of flames shooting from this home. From the front, it looks okay, but around back, that's a different story. Black charred siding from the top to bottom around the back of this home on Penn Avenue in Lawrenceville, where a neighbor captured photos of flames shooting into the sky just before 6 Monday morning and then rushed to help. Did my windows open, and I think my dog might have smelled something because he started nudging me pretty early. 
um, and then I smelled something, uh, saw some flashing light, which I kind of thought was, you know, somebody's like hazards were on or something, but it got brighter and brighter. Uh, and I looked out my window and saw it going up. Um, immediately jumped out of bed and called 911. A group of guys who live there all made it out okay. One able to get his dog out too. Firefighters blocked off Penn at Main Street for a little over an hour, and investigators with the fire marshal's office were called in. We're told a smoking materials in a trash can outside the home caused the fire. We'll have the latest coming up tonight at 5. You'll also hear more from that neighbor who called 911. In Lawrenceville, I'm Liz Kilmer, Channel 11 News. Police are looking for a man in connection with the shooting of a woman in Homewood. The woman was found dead inside a house on Monticello Street. Police say they got a call about shots fired around 2.30 this morning. Police are looking for a man. They did not have any description to give out. Right now, police need help finding a missing 12-year-old girl. They shared these pictures of Devisha Thomas Wright. She was last seen in Hazelwood yesterday wearing a white Fila shirt, a cream-colored jacket. If you know Know where she is or you think you may have seen her, do give police a call. A shootout ends with a car crashing into a home in East Liberty. The woman was grazed by a bullet as she tried to steer clear yesterday near Black Street and North Negley. Bullets also went into two homes and cars, but no one else was hurt. Investigators found one of the cars involved abandoned a few blocks away. Many of us have turned to grocery delivery services so we can keep our distance. The impact a strike could have on deliveries. Have you been staying in shape while you're staying at home? Well, James Harrison has. He shows off his Super Bowl trophy workout coming in. Love it. And the new website where friends can help friends who are out of work. Temperatures across the area in the 40s and 50s. We have a cool day ahead before a rebound in the temperatures. I'll show you when highs will return back to the 60s. WPXI now. When a major story breaks, this is where you'll find 24 hour coverage. From the Channel 11 newsroom to our crews live in the field, we'll bring you the information you need right now. WPXI now. Always on when you want the latest on. like the breaking news desk in Pittsburgh. You're going to get breaking news as it's happening. We have an anchor now dedicated to following the latest information as it comes in. And that is a resource no one else has. If you see me on the breaking news desk, you know it's an important story. When you want news from where you live, watch Channel 11 News at 5. 
The people of Pittsburgh seem to always step up in times of need, and this time is no different. We're learning about a new website where friends can help friends who are out of work. Channel 11's Jillian Hartman spoke to the organizer and shows us how it works. As Pittsburgh was starting to feel the impact of the, the COVID outbreak a couple of weeks ago, I was watching a lot of my friends in the arts, events, services industries start to lose work. Lindsay Campbell is a tech entrepreneur and came up with this website. Here's the concept. It's a community project focused on helping people without work connect with people in their network who need help. It's a win-win. The website is called friends.help. It's only been up for a day and is already generating a lot of buzz. And we've had a few dozen people create accounts. I've been seeing the help requests come through. She says it's easy for everyone to directly connect with one another. We broke it down into two categories as well. So people can sign up to do everyday tasks, things like pickup and delivery, yard work. The other category is for professional skills. And she says the website is easy to navigate. If you're somebody who needs help or has a job for somebody to do, you can visit the website, uh, look at the list of people, filter by neighborhoods. For a direct link to her, web, her website, which is friends.help, you can head over to our WPXI News app. A former hospital could soon reopen to help care for patients during the pandemic. We've told you about the Elwood City Medical Center and the financial troubles that caused it to close its doors. But now lawmakers want the governor to force it to reopen to help treat patients. No word on if the governor has considered that request. Virtual visits are now free in the Mon Health System. Telemedicine visits are available for a variety of services during regular clinic hours, Monday through Friday. On weekends, the Mon Health Wedgwood locations are open for patients who have minor medical conditions or follow up appointments. As many as 200,000 Instacart workers could strike today. If you've never heard of Instacart, their workers will go to the grocery store for you and bring your groceries to your house. But some workers say they're not getting proper protection against the coronavirus. And now they're demanding hazard pay and better safety gear. A lot of us are really literally making the decision between, you know, our health and our financial security right now. Company officials are offering more than a month of pay for anyone diagnosed with COVID-19. They will also pay a one-time bonus. UPS is trying to help stop the spread of the coronavirus by changing their delivery requirements. It won't require signatures now from customers. Instead, UPS says drivers will just make contact with the recipient and in certain cases ask for ID. The company says this move is temporary. We're getting a look at how a local 3D printing company is doing its part to help, um, help out by making parts. In one day, this company can print 200 brackets for face shields. It's a really interesting story here. Channel 11's Amy Bersikowicz shows us how they're doing it. You're looking at 23 3D printers fast at work making the plastic components for the health care masks that are in high demand right now. A face shield, a clear face shield goes along the front and uh, then the finished product would have a rubber band on the back as well and it would go over the uh, technician's face, help keep them protected. Spartan Mounts in Cranberry Township, Butler County is a 3D printing company in the business of making gun mounts. But when this company started getting calls from hospitals in state and out of state, State for help, they started production. We're working with a group called 3D PPGH, who's kind of coordinating these efforts. We have uh, one of the larger print farms in the state, so we were able to really kind of switch our resources from the, the firearm and tool mounts into uh, medical production. And Amy tells us they're partnering with other 3D printing companies in our area to mass produce the brackets for these face shields. Your severe weather Team 11 forecast. Taking a live look over the city, we have a mostly cloudy sky. The temperature is at 48 degrees. We had mid 50s out there early. The wind chill is 42. We'll have a bit of a wind chill today because we have that wind that's pretty strong still out of the west right now at 14 miles per hour. Check out our 24 hour temperature change. They are running 20 to 25 degrees colder than this time yesterday. Even colder in Beaver, 27 degrees colder there, 23 in Pittsburgh. 
So definitely more of a chill to the air, especially when you factor in the winds. They're still breezy anywhere from 10 to 20 miles per hour across our area. We have a 14 mile per hour wind currently in Pittsburgh, 18 mile per hour wind in Washington, where the winds are gusting to 32 miles per hour. So occasionally we're going to have those really strong winds this afternoon, but again, nowhere near as gusty as what we were tracking over the weekend when we had those gusts to nearly 50 miles per hour. Here's our temperature forecast for the rest of the day and evening, looking at mid 40s through 7 in 9 o'clock if you have to head out to the grocery store. 44 at 11, and then overnight tonight we'll be cooling down into the upper 30s, low down to about 37. It'll be cloudy. Good news is the winds will be much lighter, so while we're trying to sleep, we won't be hearing those howl at the window. Winds 5 to 10 miles per hour out of the northwest. Tomorrow, looking at a high near 48 degrees, we'll have winds that'll be lighter, 3 to 8 miles per hour, much improved out there, and they'll be variable. Winds out of the northwest will shift around to the northeast at times. We'll also be tracking a sunlight chance for a sprinkle. I want to show that to you here for the rest of the day and into the day tomorrow. Here's Storm Tracker at 3.30 this afternoon. I think this model is overdoing it a little bit with all of that green showing up, but we do have a chance for a shower or two coming across the area through the day. We're going to keep that chance in through about 9 or 10 o'clock tonight, and then thereafter, I actually think we're going to dry it out cloudy overnight, and we'll keep it cloudy through a good part of the day on Tuesday. Tuesday morning throughout the afternoon, we'll continue with a chance for a sprinkle. But again, we don't have a whole lot of moisture to work with, so we're not looking at any torrential downpours by any means on Tuesday. But just know there is that chance. So, again, if you are having to head out, uh, maybe to go to that grocery store, make sure you have an umbrella just in case in the backseat of the car. Here's 5 30 in the afternoon, Tuesday, still fairly cloudy. Five day forecast in your weekend, always in view coming up. And notice the temperature climb as we head through the week as well. Once we get past the cooler day on Tuesday, 53 Wednesday, it'll be partly sunny. The overnight lows are actually in the 30s, so a bit chilly in the mornings this week. We'll get the sunshine in Thursday and Friday, so that'll be nice. So mostly sunny Thursday, 56. Friday, near 60 and mostly sunny. Here's your weekend always in view. Saturday, 63, so we're seeing a jump up in the temperature department. We'll have an increase in cloud cover Saturday. Another weather system is going to be coming in, so we'll bring in a slight chance for a shower coming in Saturday night. Into the day on Sunday. Sunday itself is 61. Right now, I don't see any hefty rain coming in this week, but boy, did we have that rain over the weekend. Coming up, I'll update you on the March rainfall in the next half hour. Fine wine and spirit stores are shut down. Next, the LCB is looking at ways you can still buy liquor. New information on a possible plan. And former Sailor James Harrison's Super Bowl trophy workout. Next. In Severe Weather Center 11, we cover weather everywhere you live. And we have the experience to get it right. We know the weather patterns across our neighborhoods and understand the unique influences on your area. It's why there can be heavy downpours in northern Allegheny County. While it's dry in Greensburg and snow is moving into Irwin. Our priority is to prepare you for the weather in your neighborhood. Count on Severe Weather Team 11 on Channel 11 News. Tracking storms where you live.
might soon be able to buy liquor online during this pandemic. Wine and spirit stores closed in Pennsylvania on March 17th because of Governor Wolf's order. But now the Liquor Control Board is looking at ways people can still buy liquor and support their employees. They're exploring online sales for a limited time. We'll let you know when they come to a final decision. Dozens of American airline planes are parked at Pittsburgh International Airport. The airline recently cut service and needed a place to store the planes. Pittsburgh has become a good spot because of its size and location. We could see some delays on the new terminal project at the airport. Right now, construction is not on hold, but things aren't moving very fast. Officials say they're working with airlines to figure out the best path forward. Meanwhile, there are changes at the 9-11th airlift wing and moon because of coronavirus. According to our TRIB partners, the commander is allowing service members to work remotely. Access to the base is limited and only essential off-base travel is allowed. Trying to stay fit while stuck at home is... One of the many issues faced by athletes right now, but if you happen to have two spare Lombardi trophies just lying around, <laughs> well, you could do what former Steelers linebacker James Harrison did and use them as dumbbells for curling. The Super Bowl champ is well known for his insane workout videos that he posts on social media. He posted this video while the NFL Network was re-airing Super Bowl 43. You may remember that one. <laughs> Harrison took a Kurt Warner interception 100 yards to the house in the final minutes of the first half as the Steelers went on to beat the Cardinals. He's really struggling with that, isn't he? <laughs> well, there are still a lot of questions, a lot of confusion about stimulus money and who gets it. We're breaking down what you need to know so you don't miss out. And coming up, the best times to get outside. We're streaming WPXI now, your source for original local shows. Spice up your taste buds to your green thumb with tips for your kitchen to yard. Watch Garden Style, Saturday and Sunday at 3.30 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. on WP. Every voice, every vote matters. From the campaign trail to your backyard, we're talking to the candidates about the big issues and to the voters who will decide the election. Channel 11 News, Decision 2020 coverage you can count on.
Watch David Johnson and Lisa Sylvester on Channel 11 News, 11 at 11. Breaking out, the state health department just confirmed 693 new positive cases for coronavirus statewide. And that brings the statewide total now to 4,087 in 59 counties. You can see the breakdown there on your screen. 290 of the cases are in Allegheny County, followed by 55 in Westmoreland, 49 in Butler, 44 in Beaver, 26 in Washington, 11 in Fayette County, 7 in Greene County. The CDC has put a new travel advisory in place for New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. It's considered the epicenter of the coronavirus outbreak in the United States, and as the death toll rises, hard-hit New York City is scrambling to provide more hospital beds. NBC's Gabe Gutierrez is in Central Park, where they're building a mobile hospital. As an emergency field hospital is being built in iconic Central Park, New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut are now under a 14-day travel advisory. The CDC is urging people in the nation's worst coronavirus hotspot to halt non-essential domestic travel as cases top 70,000 in the three states with over 1,000 deaths. Not a lockdown, something much more consistent with what we've been actually saying and doing in the city and state already, which is telling people to stay home unless they have an essential reason to go somewhere. Today, the USNS Comfort is due to dock in New York Harbor. It will serve as a floating thousand bed hospital for non-coronavirus patients, freeing up beds on land. We still have to take care of pregnant women who have to deliver. We have to take care of patients who need emergency uh, surgery. We have to take care of kids. In the Bronx, ERs are packed. We are seeing a lot of younger patients that are coming through the door that are sicker as well. And that, that is surprising and a little scary. Concerns are also growing about the lack of personal protective equipment, or PPE, for healthcare workers. It's incredibly frustrating for us. Our, our coworkers are getting sick. The last five days have been the busiest ever recorded by EMS here in New York City. As for this field hospital in Central Park, it is set to open tomorrow. Gabe Gutierrez, NBC News, New York. There is some confusion about stimulus checks that are going to be going out. Uh, viewers have been contacting us wondering when the checks will arrive. Well, it should be there as soon as three weeks. Another question, where do I sign up? Well, there is no sign up. The payments are going to be automatic for people who have filed a tax return or received Social Security benefits. As for how the money will be sent, if you've gotten a tax refund in the last two years by direct deposit, that's where the money will be sent. If not, the IRS can mail a check to your last known address. So if you've moved recently, it may be a good idea to notify the IRS as soon as possible. Even if you didn't file a tax return for 2018 or 19 or pay taxes in those years, you will be eligible if you received a form SSA 1099 for the year 2019. That is a form that the Social Security Administration sends each year to people who receive Social Security benefits, including retirement and disability. These payments are not taxable. This is not a loan. This is a credit, meaning you do not have to pay the government back. The amount you get depends on how much you make. Starting today, have implemented online learning. Kiski Area School District will rely on Google tools, email, and the cooperation of parents to stream lectures and distribute assignments. Superintendent Tim Scott told our trip partners it's going to be a challenge, but at this point, there aren't many options. Last week, the state education secretary advised districts to move forward with some sort of continuity of education. Internet access is also a major factor in planning. The Leechburg Area School District began distance learning almost immediately after Governor Wolf closed schools. Knowing that a large portion of the district's 800 students do not have Internet access, the district hand-delivered packets of class materials to students. Things we don't normally pay much attention to have become a big commodity. Toilet paper, hand sanitizer. If you have a baby or a toddler, you may have trouble finding diapers. Our Jennifer Tomasek is looking into the need in our community. Diapers are a basic necessity. They're just as important as their food, their shelter, and their clothing. They need diapers. But like many things in the stores these days, they're hard to come by, and they're getting harder to buy as more families are struggling with less money. It's a growing need, and I think the longer people are out of work, the longer this pandemic goes on, 
the more we're going to see the need. The Western PA Diaper Bank is the only one of its kind in our area, serving 28 partner agencies. They distribute them every two weeks. It looks like a lot of diapers, but it's not really a lot of diapers. Last week, they gave out 24,000 diapers, an increase of 5,000 diapers from their normal giveaway. We've been receiving calls from many families that need diapers, that can't afford them, or even find them at this time. Many of those calls have been from restaurant workers, and some are from school districts that want to include diapers with their school lunch pickups. Do you have any fear that you guys are going to run out of diapers? I do have that fear. She's already missed a huge donation from a diaper company. We were scheduled for a shipment, but with the demand in the stores, um, in the communities, we we're not able to get that shipment now because they're trying to put diapers back in the stores. So Kathy is trying to ration the diapers she gives to their partner agencies, and she urges you to do what you can to help. We need the help of the community to support the other families in need. While she realizes you really can't hope a diaper or host a diaper drive right now, there are several ways that you can donate to the Western Pennsylvania Diaper Bank. Check out Jennifer's Facebook page. Just search for WPXI Jennifer Tomasic. June 2nd is turning out to be the next Super Tuesday because of the coronavirus. 11 states will be holding their primaries that day, including Pennsylvania. More than 686 delegates will be up for grabs that night. Right now, former Vice President Joe Biden leads the delegate count with more than 300 over his rival, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders. The Tokyo Olympics has been rescheduled, pushed one year, July 23rd to August 8th of next year. Almost exactly one year after the games were due to start this summer. As you know, the summer games were postponed by the virus pandemic. Organizers say the schedule for the games is key to preparations. Back with a check of your sun cast over the next couple of days. Yeah, today, tomorrow, we're not going to see a whole lot of sun out there, but it does look a little more promising as the week wears on. So Wednesday, partly sunny. Thursday, mostly sunny. So that'll be a great day to go for a walk. Here's the actual outdoor forecast this week, calling for that chance for a few spotty showers today. I also want to mention that isolated sprinkle chance for Tuesday, but I think a lot of locations and for much of the day, we stay dry with the exception of that. Same thing Wednesday, dry, partly sunny, and then dry. Dry Thursday, so these are kind of the more favorable days mid to end of the week. Stick around because coming up in just a few minutes, I still have an update for that March rainfall to show you, and I'm getting some beautiful pictures from you guys at home of the blooming trees out there. So I'll show you those coming up. They're a really different environment that we've never had before. The tax man also affected by coronavirus. What he says you should do now that the tax deadline is three months later. I'm Lisa Robertson, and we're launching a special version of Local Steals and Deals, shining a spotlight on small businesses. They're the backbone of America, and we need them to thrive now more than ever. Join us in making a difference. Text USA to 65000 to learn more. There is so much information out there about the coronavirus that Channel 11, we're here to help make sense of it all with what's happening now. Here are the very latest numbers. What will happen next? Families are taking a huge financial hit. And how it will impact your life. At Channel 11, we're committed to bringing you every angle. Health officials say they're trying to help as many people as possible to separate fact from fiction. From schools to businesses to sports teams. And to being a source you can trust for coverage you can.
6. Followed by NBC Nightly News at 6.30. If this were any other year, we would be just under two weeks from tax day, but coronavirus has changed deadlines. Yeah, and it's created a lot of questions for taxpayers. Channel 11's Jillian Hartman talked to a tax expert to get some answers. Well, with that 90 day extension, taxpayers have to be extra careful not to procrastinate. Now, the big takeaway from our conversation is that people should file sooner rather than later if they expect to get a refund. The extension of time is really to accommodate people not working and not having the wherewithal to be able to get their returns done. John Lally is a partner at Lally and Company in McCandless. Some of his clients are small business owners. The only businesses that are going to make it through this are businesses that have a strong balance sheet. But here's the catch-22. Businesses won't be earning as much, but will likely pay less taxes next year. But from a tax standpoint, I would think their, their taxes in 2020 are going to be much lower because they're going to have this gap in the beginning of the year that's just been a horrible gap financially for them. As for individual taxpayers right now, if you think you owe money, Lally says you're better off waiting until the July 15th deadline so the money serves you better in your own account. However, we did ask him if the pandemic will delay tax refunds. I would not anticipate any longer of a wait for a refund. I believe the, the IRS has orders to continue as, as normal. If you file online, you should expect your refund within a few weeks. If you paper file, then you're waiting the longer six to eight weeks to get your refunds. Now, Lally says the July postponement on federal, state, and local taxes is a great reliever, allowing more time for taxpayers to file and pay money they may owe without interest or penalty. Reporting in North Shore, I'm Jillian Hartman, Channel 11 News. Still and a positive side to everyone staying at home, the big benefits local animal shelters are seeing. You're streaming WPXI now, your source for original local shows. Get the inside scoop on all the hot events, entertainment, and celebrities in and around Pittsburgh every week. Stream Access Pittsburgh on demand anytime on WPXI. of uncertainty, we know you have a lot of questions. What's your message to people who are beginning to have these type of symptoms? Stay home. Then connect with your primary care provider. Stay with Channel 11 for answers about coronavirus. Make sure you know everything happening in the morning. Watch Channel 11 Morning News. Many of us are spending a lot of time at home and local animal shelters are seeing one of the benefits of that. Channel 11 Morning News anchor Catherine Amenta shows us more people are adopting and willing to foster pets.
The new norm, daily walks with man's best friend. These are the animals out of our East End facility here that have been adopted in the much of month of March. As you can see, we've been really, really busy. In the past two weeks, the Humane Animal Rescue adopted out 288 dogs and cats and 400 since the start of the month. If they're at home, they have the time. This is a great time to adopt. The rescue continues to screen people to be sure the animal is a fit for the family after the stay at home order is lifted. Another spike, Rossi says, is in the potential foster families, which he's thankful for in case they have to close. If our staff and volunteers uh, might get sick and we need to move the animals quickly, we're looking for people to be able to take them. The shelter says 60 animals are in foster homes right now, but no more animals will be coming soon. Late April, early May, kitten season hits us where we get inundated uh, with cats and kittens. Rossi says by the end of the summer, they see over 1,000 cats surrendered every month, so the willingness to give them temporary homes is needed. Having a pet in your home, it, it brings just that extra love, that brings that extra connection that people especially need these days with social distancing. And Catherine Amenta, Channel 11 News. Pet food is on the list of items people are hoarding. Sales of dog and cat food are up more than 50% compared to last year. Other pet supply sales are up 24%. Amazon and Petco are also seeing strong sales. Delivery company Chewy is also hiring 6,000 workers to keep up with the demand. We're hearing more uplifting stories about people helping one another. And here's Heather Catlin with just some of the people who are stepping up during this difficult time. In Texas, police officers are not only keeping neighborhoods safe, they're making sure people are well fed. Officers in Lubbock passed out 50 meals to truckers donated by a woman from the area. They praised the truckers for working tirelessly, providing food and supplies for the nation. A nonprofit in California is providing parents with much needed baby supplies. Basic baby items can be hard to find as shelves remain sparse at grocery stores. Many parents are also getting laid off. It's really nice being able to help out the community and just give back to others. It's just heartwarming and it makes your kind of heart sing a little bit. Sutter Gold Medical Foundation says they'll continue handing out free formula, diapers, and wipes as long as supplies last. And one man in Florida wanted to help out staff at his favorite restaurant, so he left a $10,000 tip for everyone to split. And he said, I want each person in this restaurant to get $500. The restaurant owner said the tip helped financially and lifted everyone's spirits. I'm Heather Catlin reporting. Your severe weather Team 11 forecast. I hope you're having a great day. I wanted to share this beautiful picture that I received over the weekend from Brad on Twitter. And you can see the pink blooms. He was down at the North Shore. Just fantastic. Now, I believe a lot of these uh, blooms, the petals at least, are on the ground because of either the high wind or the storms that blew through. Probably knocked uh, quite a bit of those down. And I want to thank all of you for sharing your pictures with me on social media today. Here is a look at our storm tracker. Doppler 11 radar. We do have that powerful weather system that continues to move well off to the east that affected us this weekend. And we have that cloudy or mostly cloudy sky around our area, a few breaks down across southern PA, and then the few showers that are occurring across northern PA. And while we will have a chance for an isolated shower today, I think a good part of the area still stays dry. But check out how busy it was this past weekend. We had severe thunderstorm warnings, we had a tornado warning, even. The this is a look at our local storm reports, and you can see all of those reports of hail. We had hail up to the size of two inches in spots. Burgettstown, Cannonsburg, uh, parts of Allegheny County getting in on some pretty hefty hail sizes there. And of course, we had a lot of flooding. Speaking of flooding, this is our March precipitation update I have for you. The reason we say precipitation is because the month of March does include snow melt. I know that's been hard to come by, but here's a look at March 4.81 inches. You can see the average almost three inches. So we are now above average 2.07 inches for the month to date. And we picked up quite a bit of rain, as I mentioned over the weekend, well over an inch of rain. In fact, in the last five days in a row, have brought measurable rainfall to the city of Pittsburgh. Here is a look at our wind gusts. It's still a pretty breezy day. We've got gusts to 35 in Greensburg, 32 in Washington. The temperatures are in the upper 40s to low mid 50s, depending on location. Out there this morning, we actually had mid 50s, but those temperatures have fallen due to a front moving through, 48 right.
right now. And we'll reach near 50 to 51 this afternoon and then cool things back off into the 5 o'clock hour with that chance for an isolated shower. Tonight, it's cloudy and chilly, 37 degrees. If you're wanting to go for a morning walk tomorrow, you will need the jacket. It'll be cloudy, northwest winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's the hour by hour for the forecast tomorrow. Cloudy at 8 o'clock, 40, 43 at noon, 47 by 5 o'clock. We'll top out close to 48. We will keep that overcast sky, though, with us with an isolated sprinkle, but other than that, not too bad. Storm tracker a little overzealous. They think it's painting a lot of rain across the area. I don't think we're going to see this much rain, but we could get in on a passing shower up until about 9 or 10 o'clock, the way it looks right now. Cloudy overnight, a stray sprinkle potentially in the morning and early afternoon on Tuesday, but you can see how it's few and far between. So we're not really expecting in, uh, much in the way of rainfall on Tuesday, just that stray sprinkle. Otherwise, it'll be cloudy too, mostly cloudy for the day on Tuesday. Here's a check of the five day forecast, and we'll warm things up for Wednesday, partly sunny, 53. The lows, though, will stay chilly in the 30s. By Thursday and Friday of the week, we're looking at mostly sunny skies and a slight rain chance as we head into Saturday night and Sunday. Fraudsters taking advantage of the COVID-19 crisis are out in full force trying to get into your personal life and wallet. Consumer advisor Clark Howard warns a simple click could do big damage. Got, got an email oh, two or three days ago. Steve McClellan and his wife saw red flags in that email right away. And just, I don't know, taking advantage of the situation, it looked like they were asking for money. He said nearly every sentence was urging him to go the next step. Let me tell you, that next step will almost always install malware on your computer or device. Malware is a way for attackers to gain a foothold uh, onto your system and uh, from that into your life. We spoke with cybersecurity expert Willis McDonald last week about an uptick in this kind of criminal activity. Emails asking for money or offering COVID-19 home testing kits all prey on your feelings. It's fairly easy for attackers to employ social engineering tactics to get people to click on links. We're in that vulnerable time where we want to help out. The FCC has a comprehensive list of the fake text, phone, and emails you need to be on the lookout for. Just it, no doubt in my mind, it was fishing. They were fishing, as they say. They were fishing for somebody. There's a lot of scammers out there. No doubt in my mind, this is one of them. I'm Clark Howard. <laughs> Something to do while you're staying home? The new concert series from Rolling Stone magazine. Coming up next. As we face this uncertainty of what's to come, we know you have a lot of questions. That's why our team is getting answers from the experts. Are we overreacting? I would rather overreact than try to slow this down. What's your message to people who are beginning to have these type of symptoms? Stay home. Then connect with your primary care provider. How long can it stay in someone's home? It can be in there for, for days. In a time of crisis, turn to Channel 11 News.
7 at 11. 11 minutes of news and weather before the first commercial. If you've been to the gas pump recently, you probably noticed prices are dropping nationwide. The price per gallon dropped nearly 23 cents in the past two weeks to 2.15. That is more than 50 cents lower than this time last year. In Pittsburgh, AAA says the average for a gallon of regular $2.28, and that's down 12 cents from last week. Tomorrow, we'll give Taco Tuesday a new meaning. Taco Bell is offering a free taco to everyone in America. drive through guests will receive a free beef nacho cheese Doritos Loco Taco. There is no purchase necessary, and Taco Bell CEO says it's a way to thank everyone for showing up for their communities. The outbreak has effectively ended live concert gatherings, but Rolling Stone magazine is connecting with artists and their audience, rolling out performances like this called In My Room. The inspiration for the name came from the Beach Boys song by the same name. It's a way for artists to keep playing while audiences are cut off from live music. That's all for Channel 11 News at noon. Our next newscast is tonight at 5 o'clock. And thanks for joining us. And you can get breaking news updates anytime at our streaming apps. Just search for WPXI on Apple TV, Roku, or Amazon Fire. Stay safe and stay healthy. As you can see, David and I are apart right now, practicing social distancing. But we have been together for 30 years, covering important news stories here in Pittsburgh. That's right, Peggy. We've seen our communities come together.